Hello everyone, today I'll be reviewing The Birth of a Nation. So The Birth of a Nation came out in 1915 and was directed by D.W. Griffith and this film focuses on the relationship between two families during the American Civil War and the Reconstruction Era. These two families are the Stoneman family who live in the north and the Cameron family who live in the south. This friendship is soon put to the test, especially when the North, the Union, ends up beating the South, the Confederates, and then eventually Abraham Lincoln is also assassinated as well, which just builds tensions up even more. So what happens is after Abraham Lincoln is assassinated, the head of the Stoneman family is then effectively put in charge of the country, and he then leads lots of black people to take over the South and as a result make things very difficult for the Cameron family. One of the main characters in this film is actually Elsie Stoneman who is played by Lydian Gish and she is the daughter of Mr Stoneman who is, being in, um, who is in charge of the country and um, from the Union Army and yeah he's in charge of the country once Abraham Lincoln is assassinated effectively now a lot of the black characters in this film are actually portrayed by white actors who are in blackface so they've just had lots of black makeup put on their face to make them look black there are a few extras in this film who are actually played by black actors which I didn't notice but really most of the main black characters we get um, a character called Silas Lynch and another character called Gus they are both black but played by white actors and all these black people they essentially move south and take over lots of the area making things very difficult for people in the south and causing lots of friction and then eventually leading to the birth of the Ku Klux Klan who come in and essentially save the day. So as you can probably tell from what I've just said this film is deep in controversy and it's not one of those films which is just suddenly become controversial looking back on it it was a very controversial film when it came out and there there were actually lots of riots which took place as a result of this film being released in places like boston and philadelphia and also there were many cities in the united states where this film wasn't even shown chicago for example however a lot of people did like it and this was actually the very first film to be shown at the white house the democratic president Woodrow Wilson was apparently a big fan of the film and this film actually did lead to the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan a year after the film was released. So this film is certainly going to be difficult to watch for a lot of people due to its portrayal of African Americans and also its historical impact on the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan. Racism aside as a film I do think it does tell quite a good story um, it is obviously you have to bear in mind this came out in 1915 it's a very long film it's three hours 14 minutes and it's a silent film obviously being released in 1915 and it's in black and white so that alone is is not going to make it appeal to a lot of people but for the time this was actually a very complex story and there is actually quite a lot going on in this film. I personally found it quite easy to follow what was going on. I did find the film probably went on a bit too long. There were quite a few bits which perhaps could have been, well, not necessarily cut out, but made shorter. One thing I did appreciate about this film was the battle scenes. So we do get quite a lot of scenes where, obviously, being set during the American Civil War, there are lots of battle scenes. And these do look very good. They look very realistic. And there are obviously a large number of extras used in this film. Which at the time must have been a record. This is 1915 remember. And it is very impressive the way some of these scenes were shot. However a lot of the scenes in this film do come across as quite messy. And a bit all over the place. It does seem as though D.W. Griffith might have just said. Okay everybody just run wild and fight each other and just jump all over the place because the film was very busy there were always so many characters 
on the screen at the same time except in the scenes where you have the characters in the houses and then it is easy to see what's going on obviously being a silent film um, we don't hear any of the characters talk but we do get these title cards come up on screen which actually does happen quite a lot during this film and is always done very well in my opinion I do also think that the orchestral music score is also quite good actually did find it quite catchy sometimes especially towards the end of the film however obviously th th um, this film being very controversial is going to be very difficult to watch for a lot of people I can completely understand if you don't want to watch a film like this due to its racial depiction of African Americans there were some scenes which which do seem very strange watching it now as um, the film does portray the Ku Klux Klan as being the saviors and being the heroes who are saving the American way of life and it does portray as all the all the black people in the film are essentially rapists and murderers except for a couple of um, black people who used to be slaves for the Cameron family who essentially don't like um, don't like anybody from from the north of America from the Union side who wants to move down south and take over but to be fair the way this film portrays it it's almost possible to understand why this film did influence the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan not that I agree with it obviously but if you imagine this film came out in 1915 possibly the longest film at that time and for its time it's a very complex film it's a very film it's a film on a very large scale so it could easily have had an impact on lots of people Going into watching this film, I did know that it was controversial, but at the same time, I can appreciate the scale of it and the importance that it has because this film did 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 include lots of techniques which hadn't been done before, and has influenced lots of films which came after it. I do think that Lydian Jish does a very good job portraying Elsie in this film. She really is the main character, and she has a big impact on the plot and obviously being a silent film she doesn't have any dialogue but she does do a very good job with the facial expressions and the body language and showing the struggles of her character during this time because she's a character who is from the north but who has friends in the south and essentially sees everything that um, that is going on but wants to be able to to deal with the situation and help out the Cameron family in the south while also her father is from the north and and is essentially in charge of everything that is going on and Lydian Jish is actually recognized as being the first lady of American cinema and really one of the first real Hollywood stars of the silent era D.W. Griffith as a director he was actually one of the greatest and most well-known directors of the silent era and although he did accept that there was lots of controversy around this film and a year after this he actually made a film called Intolerance which is um, which I haven't seen yet but is supposed to be a kind of apology for this film or a kind of film for people who didn't like this film so when I look at this film it's a very complicated film to watch um, in some ways obviously it's a film rooted deeply in racism and bigotry but at the same time, it is a very, um, a very ambitious film for its time, and certainly, I think is still a very good story, nonetheless. So I'm going to give *The Birth of Nation* a rating of seven out of ten. It's certainly not a film that I can recommend for everyone. Um, if you're somebody who is easily offended, then I can completely understand why you wouldn't want to watch this film but at the same time if you're someone who wants to watch a film which has had a big impact on Hollywood history then I would say definitely check this out because it's one of the oldest films and in fact it's actually the oldest film that I have ever seen in my life so there we go so that is my review of The Birth of a Nation so what do you guys think have you guys seen it would you like to see it or would you like to stay clear of it I can completely understand either way Anyway, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.